Hi, following directly from our previous problem of the potential step, we'll now consider the case when the energy of the particle is below the potential V0. We'll solve the Schrodinger equation and we'll see what wave solutions we get. So this is our physical problem. It's a potential step, but this time we'll consider the case where the energy is less than the potential V0. In our previous video, we talked about the energy being above the potential V0. But as you can see, as we decrease, decrease the energy, there will be a point in time where the energy will fall, low, fall below the potential, like when the energy of the particle is over here. And in line with our general method of solving these problems, there will be a change in sign of the potential minus the energy in this region. That's why we need to isolate the cases where the energy is greater than V0 and where the energy is less than V0. So this is the case we'll look at where the energy is less than V0. Now again, we want to use some arguments to discuss what is the picture or what is the outcome of this problem due to classical mechanics. So in classical mechanics, we'll start as the particle over here and we'll travel towards the potential step over there. Now as you can see, the particle will travel inside the potential step, but when it reaches this point, the kinetic energy of the particle would be less than zero. Because the energy of the particle at this region would be the energy minus the potential, we get a negative answer, and due to classical mechanics, a uh, body cannot have negative kinetic energy. So due to the attractive nature of the potential, the particle will enter this region, the potential will pull the particle back and it will just be reflected in this direction over here. Now we can say because of that, there will be total reflection of particles in this direction. As the particle travels towards the potential, it will be reflected back, total reflection. That is what we get classically. Now quantum mechanically, we cannot make any justifications of that, that statement right now. Now we talked about, yes, there will be reflection of particles back and there will be a transmission of particles back, a ratio of particles will be reflected and transmitted based on the energy value. So right now, maybe, just maybe, we might want to say that particles will be reflected. It will go inside here, it will be reflected over here, but we can't conclude conclusively what is the proportion of particles that will be reflected. We just don't know. Uh, or even whether the particle is able to go through the potential step. We can't do that right now. But as always, in classical mechanics, this behavior of what happens when the particle hits the potential step is regulated by the Schrodinger equation. So we want to solve the Schrodinger equation to tell us what we get or what does the quantum picture tell us. All right? So solving the Schrodinger equation, now before we go, I just want to say that yes, we isolate the case when the energy is less than V0, but again, we need to separate the cases for x less than 0 and for x more than 0 because as you can see, there will be a change of potential. But what can I say? I can say that the solutions to the showing the equation would be the same as the previous problem for the region when x is less than zero. Just take a look carefully. Now you see the energy is over here, the potential is over here, and then I will decrease the energy to this point. As you can see, it's just a scalar decrease of the energy. There's no difference comparing, there's no difference or change in sign when we compare the energy to the potential. But obviously, the result, the solutions are going to be different over here because there's a change in sign of V minus E. And that's why we will solve the showing the equation only for this region. So, solutions in the region when x is less than 0 are going to be the same, we'll just leave that as it is. For the region when x is greater than 0, the time independent showing the equation is this one over here, and we want to solve that. Now, as always, we want to leave the differential quantities d2 side in terms of dx2 and psi on the left hand side and have 0 on the right hand side to get one of those forms so we can write the solution. So, most logically, I'll bring the energy multiplied by psi over to the left hand side. This becomes a minus and this will become equal to zero, all right? And then what I want to do now is that I want to multiply by a minus 2m divided by h bar squared to remove the constant term or the coefficient term in front of the second derivative. Now, when I do that, I will get a d2 psi x dx2 I will plus, and I'll multiply that inside over here, the, the psi, the psi x term, psi in terms of x term, so 2m minus 2m h bar squared and then I will factor out the psi squared, so I'll get v naught minus e, and sorry, the psi in terms of x equal to zero. All right, now as you can see over here, it's a plus, but there's a minus sign. I'll just make a small amendment by bringing the minus sign outside, because when I do that, notice that I can say that this term in front of the, the psi, psi x is going to be positive. All right, why is it gonna be positive? Because for this case, notice I already say that the energy is less than the potential v naught. You know, again, we are stressing that you need to isolate the case because this is not going to be positive if the energy is greater than V0. So we isolate the case when the energy is less than V0. We know this is positive, and when I do that, what I can write is that I can write K2, not to be confused with K1, which applies to the, the, the point over here. K2 squared is going to be 2m divided by h bar squared V0 minus E. All right? 
which is positive because as you can notice from the square and then I'll just eliminate this and write in place of that a k2 squared right a k2 squared so basically this is again just simply rearranging the showing the equation to this form where I can see that this k2 squared is positive it's a positive term in front of the psi x what I wanted but now I got a negative sign over here now this negative sign may concern you because more often than not we always got a positive sign up to now but you don't have to worry because in one of my earlier videos I talked about this form of the second order differential equation a minus sign we can now immediately write the solutions as psi 2 which applies to the region where x is greater than 0 is equals to a linear combination of this time it will be e to the minus k2x and e to the kx noticing that now we don't have the imaginary numbers now you just want to compare I've also written the solutions when x is greater than x is less than 0 which is the same solutions as the previous problem which is what we have over here a linear combination of this time e to the ik1x and e to the minus ik1x so notice this and pay very careful careful attention to this where we solve for the showing the equation in the separate regions number one firstly we need to notice that this term in front of the side x is going to be different alright because as you know down here there's no energy so noticing that k1 squared there's no potential sorry there's no potential over here k1 squared there's no potential value but for k2 squared there is a potential value as you can see that the potential is over here but more importantly Note, pay attention to the minus sign and because of the minus sign now the solutions will be the transcendental number e raised to k2x and minus k2x no without the imaginary number that is the solution to this showing the equation over here so these are the complete solutions written as written like that okay so psi terms of x I write psi 1 which is in this region psi 2 in this region and k1 squared and k2 squared respectively over there like so okay the solutions to the showing the equation now I keep on emphasizing this thing about based on the problem, based on the context, we can eliminate the solutions. So for the first time, we can really implement that move to this over here like so. Now I can see that if you notice this e to the k2x, right? This solution applies, psi2 applies to the region where x is greater than 0. Now this solution is going to diverge as x tends towards infinity. Why can I say that? Well basically it's as x tends towards infinity, e raised to infinity also tends towards infinity. So this is a non-physical solution and immediately I can just let d equals to 0. d must vanish, this solution must vanish. Well firstly, we, the solutions of the wave function needs to be bounded. And secondly, I can't exactly have a solution going like that because when I have a solution going like that, as shown by this e to the k2x, it will cross this point of the, pot of the potential v0 and it's totally invalid because you know how can I have the, the wave function crossing the potential is invalid so eliminate all the invalid solutions right so which is why we can eliminate that over there so these are the solutions that we have and these are the solutions to the showing the equation everything is nicely done so going back to the idea of let's see what we can find out quantum mechanically what does the solutions tell us and to do that we go straight to these things called the reflection and transmission coefficients right we go straight to the reflection and transmission coefficients which as you know is given by the probability density the probability density current so this case is the reflective density current over the incident density current take the magnitude squared that and the transmitted density current over the incident density current and take the magnitude and square that and really the density current the transmitted density current is given by this thing over here so really let's find that out now I want to do the transmitted one first right I'll do the transmitted one first Again, this J, okay, this J transmitted, J incident, J reflected, corresponds to the appropriate solutions of, of the wave function. So, if you want to take a guess, J transmitted involves the wave that is transmitted past the potential step. Now, if we look at these solutions over here, this corresponds to the solution E, C to the uh, E minus uh, K to X. So, this corresponds to this over there. So, we will just substitute the wave function for when we calculate the, the J transmitted using the appropriate wave function. So, let's look at this one for now. And what can we see? We can see that C times E, C a constant times E, uh, raised to the minus K2X is a real function, all right? As you can see, there's no imaginary part, unlike the parts over here. Now, noticing that when I take the conjugate of a real function, I would get the function itself, all right? Psi 2, I'll get the function itself. And because of that, when I calculate the transmitted current density, what I'll do now is that I'll just eliminate the, the conjugate functions and replace them with the, the functions themselves, the wave functions themselves, which is what, what I did. And when I see that, I notice that these quanti this quantity is the same as this quantity over here, so the transmitted current density is equal to zero, 
all right? And because it's equal to zero, I can immediately say that the transmission coefficient, the ratio of particles that will be transmitted as we pass the potential step is also equal to zero. Just substitute zero over there. And now, our first conclusion, our first conclusion by solving this is that I can say that none of the particles will be transmitted over the potential step. Now, reasons we'll see why very soon. That is not entirely accurate. All right, but just take it for now that none of the particles, and let's use the terminology correctly, none of the particles are transmitted past the potential step because the transmission coefficient tells us that T equals to zero.